Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under data structures and algorithms playlist So in this video tutorial we are going to be taking an introduction to the linked list data structure So since this is the very first video tutorial on linked list in this entire data structures and algorithms playlist we are going to first understand what exactly is a linked list We'll take a comparison between linked list versus arrays to understand the pros and cons of linked list data structure and obviously we'll understand the operations of linked list and lastly we will also see the types of linked list and applications so as you can see we have to cover a lot of things and if you are a beginner if you don't know the linked list data structure make sure you watch this video till the end because once you understand the entire working and the concept the implementation part will get very easy when we actually type in the code as we move along in this data structures and algorithms playlist so make sure you watch this video till the end and with that being said let's start off with the very first question what is a linked list So starting off with a little bit of definition little bit of theory a linked list is a linear data structure in which elements are not stored at contiguous memory locations so yes just like stack and queue linked list is a linear data structure however the key point to note that here the elements are not stored at contiguous memory locations which means they are not stored right besides each other in the memory so you'll see that when we go behind the scenes that is when we take a digital representation on the digital blackboard but right now just remember this point that elements are not stored at contiguous memory locations so the elements in a linked list are linked using pointers or some entity that points to the next element okay so the concept of pointers is used and when i'm saying pointers it's not the pointers in c++ what i'm trying to say is some kind of pointing mechanism is used or some kind of linking mechanism is used wherein one node or one entity is linked to the next one now in c++ we are going to be using pointers but in java we use some different way because we don't have pointers over there right so in simple words a linked list consists of nodes where each node contains a data field so with there is some value in that data field and then we also have another field which is a reference which is linked to the next node in the list so since we want to have a linked scenario that is we want one element linked to the other we need a reference link value also right so as you can see in the diagram we have node a node b and node c in node a we have the data value and we also have one more value which points to the next node so that's why i have named it as next so you can consider this as a pointer to the next value because as i mentioned it is not stored in a contiguous memory location right the first one is also known as the head node and the last node in the next it is storing null because it is not pointing to any further nodes okay so this is how a typical linked list data structure would look like now to understand it in more detail let's take a comparison between linked list data structure and array and we'll also see what happens behind the scenes how a linked list would look like in memory okay so as you can see in the digital blackboard let's understand the working of linked list now we already know linked list consists of nodes where each node contains a data field and a reference link to the next node in the list right so this is something that we just saw so these are some things that we have in a linked list we have a node which can also be referred as a link or an element or an object so these are different alias names used for the same thing now each node in the linked list consists of two parts the data part and the link part so this link node is also known as the next value which means it would be pointing to the next node so the next is something that points to the next node or element in the linked list and since they are not stored in contiguous memory locations we need some address storing mechanism which will point to the next node right so as you can see in this diagram over here this is a computer memory scenario each box individually has its own unique address let's say hash 001 and so on and so forth you know so we have memory addresses in the memory let's consider this as a ram so you can see this pink structure over here so this is first node which will have d as the data n as the next one and you can see the next node is somewhere stored differently and it's not stored right besides the first node right so node a is over here node b is somewhere else node c is somewhere else so that's why we need a pointing mechanism you can see n is pointing to the node b over here the n value of this node b is pointing to the next node and so on and so forth and this is how the linking is happening conversely if you see an array in orange over here you can see that in array all the values are stored right besides each other so this is index position 0 1 2 and 3 and the addresses would be something like 1000 1002 1004 1006 and so on and so forth so they are in a sequential form in a contiguous way but when it comes to linked list you can see they are not stored right besides each other they are stored randomly and the linking is done by the next pointer in this case so this is how a typical linked list would look like behind the scenes in the computer memory 
Now let's actually understand the pros and cons of what a linked list would have over an array. Okay, so let's do a linked list versus array comparison. Now the two main advantages of linked list over array is dynamic size and ease of insertion and deletion. So to understand this, let's take an example over here. We have an array situation over here. So this is an array, right? You can see that our array is of size six. Right now it is storing only three values, one, three and five. Now when it comes to size, you cannot change the size once you have defined it, right? So array has a static size and you have to predefine it initially. So now you can see three of them are going wasted. So when you create an array of size six in the memory, six memory blocks are reserved just for this array. Even if you are using three, these three are made useless because you cannot use them for anything else. Now, right now it might not seem relevant, but when it comes to real world programming, these array sizes are huge. And if you're wasting a lot of memory, your program is not going to be efficient and it's going to eat up a lot of memory. So this is one drawback dynamic size. So how does linked list solve this purpose? So when it comes to dynamic size, let's say you want to add one more value over here or one more node. So in linked list, what you can do is you can immediately create one more node. Okay. And you can say this null pointer to point to this new node. Okay. So you can have a new data over here. You can say the value is six. Okay. Let's say the address of this node is hash zero nine. Okay. So this address would be now stored over here hash zero nine and this null will be removed. So now this node is now pointing to the next node and here it would be null. So you can see dynamically, you can easily add more nodes immediately and you can also delete them on demand. So you're not wasting extra memory or you're not using less memory and there is a huge flexibility over here. So this is one major advantage that is dynamic size. Now let's take a look at ease of insertion and deletion. So let's say our array is storing these numbers 135 in a particular ascending order, you know, so 135 in that order, in that ascending order. So these are some IDs which you want to store of some employees. And let's say now a new ID is coming in, which is ID two. So according to the algorithm, that is according to our implementation, that all the values should be in ascending order. Two should be stored over here. This three should be moved over here and this five should be moved over here. So you can see that just because we had to add one value two, we also had to move this value and this value. So essentially what we did is we performed multiple operations, basically three operations. We moved five over here. Then we moved three over here and then we added two over here, right? So we had to rearrange or resort the entire array just to insert one value. Now imagine you had hundreds of value and you had to insert one value in between. You have to first completely shift those hundred values, right? So you have to perform extra operations just to insert or delete a particular value. Similarly, if you just delete three, let's say you want to remove three, then you have to also take five over here. Right, because that's our requirement. Our value should always be in ascending order. So just by deleting this, you not only delete this, but you do one more extra operation of moving five to this location. So that's an extra overhead. And when it comes to larger sized arrays and larger operations, this becomes very tedious and your program will not be efficient. So when it comes to insertion and deletion in linked list, it becomes very easy because you can simply create one more extra node. Okay. Let's say this is two. So as you can see, after one, we need to have two, right? We, we cannot have three because that's what we want. We want everything in ascending order. The value should be in ascending order. So instead of one linking to three, you can make this node link to this. And now you can make this node link to this. So here it would be hash zero one. Let's say this address is hash 77. So the head node would be storing hash 77. And ultimately you can erase this link off. So you can see you did not have to shift any of the other elements. You just had to add one new element and change the links. So this is much more easier and direct approach rather than shifting everything in the entire array. So this is more easy insertion and deletion. So the deletion would be again similar. So what you have to do is you have to just erase out this node and relink the head node with the node having value of three. So as easy as that and your insertion and deletion is sorted. So this is a major advantage that is the dynamic size and ease of insertion and deletion. So of course, linked list has its own disadvantages as well. For example, random access is not allowed. We have to access elements sequentially starting from the first node. Now in an array, let's say you want to access the third value that is this value. You can easily say ARR of two. So that would give you five. 
But if you want to access value phi in a linked list, you have to start from node number one. You have to check the value if it is phi, then jump to node number two using this link. Again, check if the value is three and then jump to the last link, check the value phi. And if you get the value phi, you can print it out. So you have to perform a lot of traversal over here and that can become inefficient. So yes, arrays have random access and linked list don't have random access. Another drawback over here is extra memory space for a pointer is required with each element in the list. So you can see with every node, we have two elements, right? We are storing two values. One is the actual value and one is the address also. So this address is an extra overhead which, which we have to store because the values are not stored in contiguous memory allocations or memory locations just like the arrays, right? So that's why we have to store an extra value and that's why extra memory space is required. And lastly, linked list are not really cache friendly because in arrays elements are contiguously stored because they are stored right one besides another and there is locality of reference which is not there in the case of linked list which means that arrays are usually located at one single place which means they are very close by when it comes to linked list the nodes in the linked list are placed anywhere in the entire memory so the traversing of nodes gets really hectic so yeah these are the three disadvantages but you have to understand that linked list have these two major advantages so that's why we need to understand when exactly to use a linked list versus an array so certain type of implementations let's say where the dynamic size is required or where insertion and deletion happens a lot in that case a linked list would be more beneficial compared to arrays arrays can be useful when there is a lot of random access required or when you want to save some memory space at that time maybe arrays can be helpful so the key is to understand where exactly to use what data structure because each and every data structure has its own pros and cons and are suitable only for specific tasks. So this was linked list versus arrays. Let's see a little bit of operations of linked list. So when it comes to operations of linked list, we have six major or standard operations. The first one is traversing a linked list. So traversing would be starting from the head node. The first node is always known as the head node. Moving on to the next one and moving on to the next one. So that is basically traversing a linked list depending upon what value you want to find. So we have five, one and two over here. So if you want to find value one, you have to start from the first node. You have to check the value. If it is equal to one, you have to print it or use it. If not, then you have to go to the next node. So you always have to start from the head node. So that is basically traversing a linked list. Second operation is append a new node. So appending happens at the end of the list. So this means you are creating one extra node. You're adding some data in it. And along with the data part, we also have the next pointer. So the N stands for next. Okay, so N is next, which means which points to the next element or next node. And lastly, you just have to create the link. Okay, so that is appending a new node. We also have prepending a new node, which is adding a node at the start of the list. So in that case, you will create a node over here. Again, add the data, again, add the next pointer create the link. But in this case, you have to make one more change. Now the head of the entire link list has also changed. It will be the newly added node, right? So you have to cancel this out and this now becomes the new head. Okay. Because we have prepended a complete node in the entire link list, which means we've added a node at the very beginning of the link list. The next one is inserting a new node to a specific position. So let's say this is position one or this is node one and node two, but you want a node in between. So what you have to do is you have to add a node over here. So first things first, what you have to do is you have to create or change this, this link you have to change. So you have to point the next of the head node to the newly added node. Then what you have to do is you have to change or add the value of this address that is of the second node over here. So you have to make this link. And lastly, then you have to erase off this link. Okay. So this has to be done in a particular order only. Otherwise, and this you'll understand better when we actually go ahead and do the implementation. So this is inserting a node to a specific position in the list. Then we also have deleting a node from the list. So let's say you want to delete this one. So what you have to do is basically just change the link of this head node and make it point to the last node and break this links. Okay. So this is deleting a node from the list. Now deleting can also happen at any position. So if you delete this last one, so you just have to delete this link. If you delete the first node, you just have to delete this link and change the head and make this or the next node as the head. Okay. So this was delete a node from the list. And the last one is updating a node in the list. So let's say right now the value over here is D. You want to change this to D2 or some other value. 
so you will first have to start from the head you have to traverse from one node to another go from this node to this node so whichever node or whichever value you want to change you have to check in all those nodes reach to that particular node and then change that value so when it comes to updating a node you also have to do the traversing of the linked list you have to traverse the entire list go to that particular node and then change that value so yeah these are the six main or standard operations of a linked list and now let's see the different types of linked list because depending upon the types the operations also change a little bit so we have three standard types of linked list number 1 is singly linked list two is doubly linked list and three is circular linked list as the name suggests in singly linked list we have only one way of traversing the linked list that is next node so you can just go from 1 to 2 to 3 but you cannot come back okay so this is not allowed because there is no basically pointer pointing back to the previous node so that's why the name singly linked list and this is what we've been seeing throughout this entire tutorial but then the next type is doubly linked list and in this case we have one more pointer or one more element inside the node which is known as the p node or you can say previous node and as the name suggests the p points to the previous node so you can traverse in this forward way as well as this backward way okay so if this is the head node that is position number 1 2 and 3 you can go from 1 to 2 and if you reach 2 you can also go backwards so you can go from 2 to 1 using this previous node because this previous element or previous pointer will store the address of the previous node okay now when you use doubly linked list again one more extra memory space is used over here so along with the data value you can see we are storing two extra values that is two pointers which are pointing to the next node and the previous node so for the head the previous would be pointing to null and if you consider this as the last one or the tail in the tail node or in the last node the next pointer would be again pointing to null okay null or nothing basically lastly we have the circular linked list in which we have the singly linked list however there is only one change that is the last node that is this one over here is basically reversely pointing to the first node so it is not pointing to null just like this one in singly linked list this is pointing to null okay and in doubly linked list also the last node the next pointer points to null or stores a value of null but when it comes to circular linked list the next pointer in the tail or the last node points to the very first node that is the head node so now you can go in a circular pattern even though you cannot come back but you can at least reiterate the entire linked list right so there is only one way or one direction of complete circulation so that's why circular linked list okay so these are the three different types of linked list and let's now see the last part that is the applications of linked list so some applications of linked list are as follows now linked list is a very flexible data structure which means you can use linked list to implement stack and queue data structure as well you know you can change the implementation depending upon what exactly you want to perform so you can create a stack implementation using linked list you can also create a queue implementation using linked list also linked list can also be used to implement graph data structure which is a non linear data structure which we haven't yet seen but we will see in future implementing hash tables which is another type of data structure concept when it comes to real world examples the undo functionality in photoshop or word can be used because it is basically a set of actions which are linked to each other right so when you add more effects or filters if you want to go back you can use linked list also now there are many more real world applications of linked list i'll drop a link in the video description to a quora post wherein a user has asked what are the different applications real world applications and a lot of experts have given a lot of examples of linked list you can check that out in the video description so yeah that's it for this video guys this was all about linked list data structure we took a complete overview about what exactly is a linked list we took an example of linked list versus arrays and we also saw the pros and cons lastly we also saw the operations of linked list and the types of linked list and we ended this video with the applications i hope the concept of linked list data structure is very clear to you now if you watched this video till the end please give this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was if you understood this concept clearly or not any suggestions from your end do share it with your friends also So that's it for this video guys in the upcoming videos we will be covering more topics on linked list data structure like the different types and the implementation part so if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever i upload those videos and thanks for watching see you guys in the next one peace